All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Herb Sessions. This is another exciting episode. Got some friends here. I'm excited, guys, to have you here. Uh, a couple things I've been into lately, as always, Laird Superfood. Check it out. It's good organic coffee creamer if you need your coffee fix. <coughs> and uh, whiskey I've been drinking lately, Knob Creek 9. That's Knob Creek 9. Check it out. Pretty good stuff. Also, check out my other episodes on any platform, IG, uh, SoundCloud, and I think that's it. Just type in Herb Sessions and you'll find them. So, I got some cool guests from work. Um, go ahead and introduce yourselves, guys. Whoever wants to go first. <laughs> you want to go first, buddy? Yeah, sure. All right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> uh, so, I just moved here from Arizona. I uh, went to school out there and then decided to come out to Utah just to start a whole new life. Cool. So far, I've been working at the university for about nine months, ten months now, and uh, met these pretty cool guys in CT. So, I thought, hey... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and your name, good sir. Yeah, it's uh, Cash. Cash, yep. Cash Money with a K, right? Yep, yep. K, <laughs> yeah. Cash Money with a K. <laughs> Love it. My lady. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, my name's Crystal, and I work with Russell at the U in CT Tech. So, and it's been a good time. Cool. Try to explain that more at you. Kind of lead into it just a little bit more, okay. or you could bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, um, because I think on the last one I didn't, I think we weren't talking loud enough, and it was kind of quiet. So I'm trying to figure this all out. It's, I haven't messed with the video recording before, like I'm doing now. So, it's all trial and error. So okay. we'll see how it turns <laughs> out. But. So I wanted you to come on the show because we want to talk about something we have in common here and yes. the world itself. Yes. Uh, we're going to talk about anxiety, and usually depression follows anxiety. So mm-hmm. I'll give you a rundown of my story. Uh, my issue, I don't want to call it an issue, it kicked in for me at a very young age. I was about, I think, five when I started having problems. Just didn't know where I was going, didn't know what I was doing with mental issues that is um just a very sad kid didn't know why then later on i would find out um you know as time went on it got worse and worse especially during teenage years Mm -hmm. boy you want to talk about mess yeah um there was uh it got to the point where it got to like self-infliction issues um i think a lot of kids go through it Mm -hmm. but then they just don't know how to bring it up or tell their parents because they're embarrassed or they think that you're weak or you got to be strong like them. It goes on and on and on and on. So you kind of feel trapped within yourself and you don't know what to do. So you put the pain on yourself. And that's what I did for boy a long, long, long time. Then I went to multiple therapists on and off my whole life pretty much. I'm in therapy now and I found the right kind of therapy. I didn't know this. There was, there's all kinds of therapy. Uh, there's family, marital, but the one that I needed the most was trauma therapy. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm working with a trauma therapist right now, and this dude is just, he, he Pandora's box, man. It's <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> man, really? <laughs> this is what's going on? <laughs> and um, it, it, it's, it, some sessions are really great, and then some sessions I just feel like we're just hanging out. Yeah. Just hanging out because things are okay. Um on and off with medications, I think I took a slew of every antidepressant that was on the table, along with um, anxiety medications. And for me, it worked to about like a point. For most people, usually right when you start taking it, it works out great. You feel mm-hmm. great. You're like, damn, man, I could conquer the world. Then after a while, they keep upping it and upping it. And then you start to get a little bit more number and number and number. And that's how, that's where it got to me. It got to the point where I was like, I could just end my life now. It was that comfortable. It was scary. Yeah. So I stopped. I said, forget, th- forget it. That, that's no way to live. And I, I never got like a diagnosis. I was always like, man, there's something up. I just can never be happy. And there was all, it's always waves. It's never like 
consistent mm-hmm. like i'm good i'm good i'm good it's always like yeah dude <laughs> yeah and then it's <laughs> like man i don't want to live anymore and there's no reason for me to even life is good i have it really good but mentally it was not good my life was good but mm-hmm. in here it was a mess so when i got to x-ray school i needed accommodations for school and like, well, you got to go get testing to see if you have like a learning disability, whatever it is that um, even when I had to go take my boards, I had to submit all this paperwork because I needed extra time. Okay. Um, something to look into if you need time, if you're not good at test taking like myself, because where they only give you three hours, I think they gave me six. They doubled it, which was psh- I took all six hours. (laughs) 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 So I got that done and come to find out it was a diagnosed with major depressant disorder uh, with mania, which I think they're trying to get away from bipolar one disorder, Mm -hmm. but that's what everyone's familiar with. But I prefer to say major depressant disorder with mania, meaning not only are you fighting depression, but those waves up and down, that's where it comes from. Um, Mostly people who are bipolar are mostly just severely depressed. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not that they don't appreciate what they have. And I I, I always battled that too is, oh, your your life is so good. What What are you worrying about? You know, you have it, you know, look at what you did. Look at all the accomplishments you have. I was like, I I never said I'd didn't appreciate that. I've never said I don't appreciate what I've done or things like that. It's until you're in it and you deal with it your whole life, you just don't know. And that's not to harp on people who don't go through it. It's it it's hard. It, it's hard to explain. So hard. And <laughs> then people are like, "What's the problem?" And you're just, I. It's tough. And uh, I I want to do this episode because I want to open people up more because, y- believe it or not, there's probably people out there who don't want us to talk about it, who are afraid to be like, man, I got, this is what's going on. You know, I don't feel okay. They're scared what their work might think of them or their friends. Um, and too bad. <laughs> like, you can't <laughs> hold that in, you know, yeah. because if yeah. you hold that in, you're 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 set you're setting yourself up for just destruction disaster yeah <laughs> so that that's where i'm at it's still an ongoing battle um mm-hmm. you know some days are great some and i'll notice it too i'm like oh man I'm, uh, here it comes here it comes yeah you could feel it coming yeah. it's a crazy <laughs> it, it's the craziest feeling and and it's not about being you're weak or you're weak-minded or whatever, because I want to be happy. Man, I thrive. I'm like, what can I do better to make? I'll, I'll work out, I'll eat, hel- I eat super healthy. I do all these things that people are like, these are good for yeah. your mind. But yeah. my mind's like, oh, I'm going to give you some depression. Yeah. Here you go. Sprinkle that yeah. on top. Here you go. <laughs> e- eat your heart up. Yeah. And uh, it, it it's tough. And when... I go through my moments, people see it too. They're like, man, what's up? What's up with you, dude? You're usually pretty happy going, joking around. And that's why I do joke around a lot, because if I don't, I'm going to be a mess. And that's why I have music too, is because when I'm in that, dude, Mm -hmm. depression, what? (laughs) But when I'm done, it comes like, oh, man, it's all over. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You know? Uh, So that's where I'm at. It, you know? It's not going to ever go away as much as I want it to. And I always try to figure out where is this coming from? Why why, why am I always anxious? Mm -hmm. Um, Just what I went through as a kid, having all these surgeries and just not understanding what's going on. And then come to find out it runs deep in my family and none of them are talking about it or they don't want to admit it. I got cousins who have only just told me, like, don't, don't tell my you know significant other or don't tell so and so don't tell my parents i'm like damn man yeah don't hide it yeah and i think that's what you're coming kind of coming back to where people are just kind of afraid to be you know weak you know and i think that they kind of say that oh if i tell someone about what i'm feeling you know they might see me as weak and yeah yeah, so it's it's interesting perspective Yeah. yeah and um 
Yeah. It's 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 wild because people wanna talk about it and they don't and they really just are they're afraid. They're afraid of and and, and a lot of it yeah. too is they wanna lose what they have too. They wanna lose family to mm-hmm. they're like, What's up? What's going on? Mm-hmm. What's going on? Um, but the more you talk about it and the more you bring it out, I mean I used to I haven't told anybody. I think when I got diagnosed I told three people. But as I get older and older in age and it gets harder and harder with like these waves because yeah. the stress <laughs> just gets more and more as you get older. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I do meditation and yoga and it helps. But the only thing that really helps is like, hey, man, this is what I'm going through. Mm-hmm. And you'd be surprised. People are like, oh, <laughs> damn. Yeah. I've kind of been through that. Yeah. You know, yeah, I've I had my moments. Yeah. And kudos to people who are quote unquote tough I guess <laughs> but even with that toughness there there's a moment where there's like I can't do it anymore oh yeah. mm-hmm. you know yeah. nobody is immune to like this yeah, yeah. no sooner or later you're going here or you're going here <laughs> yeah like and it may not be for long sometimes it's a couple of days and they're like cool yeah and some people it's months or yeah. years and it's it's tough it's tough but don't be afraid to talk about it so I wanted to bring you on because you told me what was going on. And your yes. family kind of came at you a little bit, kind of belittled you. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> All go right. ahead, give, give, me so your, give me your story. I H- how did you, how do you work through it? How, how do I work through it? Yeah. Oh, gosh, that's hard. Uh <laughs> so first of all, I was diagnosed with major depressive disorder as well. Hey, um, cheers. <laughs> right? And anxiety when I was 11 or 12-ish. And then a year later, after that, I also got diagnosed with anorexia. So oh, <laughs> I was really? just bombarded with a bunch of stuff. Um, so it was, I was definitely going through a hard time. Um, I remember during my eighth grade year, actually, it got really bad that I had to go to the hospital and I had to stay there for a week, and then I had to go to like some special, like safe school for like another month before they'd allow me to go back to like my real school again. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, <laughs> like you said, like teenage years were super tough. Um, I'd cry all the time. I just always feel like I was just surrounded by darkness. Um, I did the self harm too. Mm-hmm. And I still have some of those scars around. Most of them have faded. Yeah. But some are still there. And then, yeah, obviously my family has been, like my immediate family has been super supportive. And they're honestly my, my rock. My mom's my rock. Cool. Um, so <laughs> I go to her a lot. I feel like she's my biggest support. So I think that's how I keep surviving. And even, like, when I start going downhill, like, I think of her. I'm like, no, like, I can't do this to my mom. Yeah. So I try harder for her and for my family and for my little brother. I'm like, no, I, I can't do this mm. to them. Like, I have to be there for them. So I feel like my family and my faith has been the biggest help. But like you say, yeah, there are family members <laughs> who um, think I'm weak. I think it was a couple of years ago, my aunt, my mom's sister, she called me um, just to see how my New Year's was. It was a few days after New Year's. It's like, oh, yeah, it's fine. You know, we just talked. We caught up. And then she asked me, oh, like, well, how have you been? And, like, I told her the truth. Like, oh, I've been all right. You know, it's been a little mm-hmm. hard lately, but I'm doing okay. <laughs> and then she But you like, weren't? <laughs> I wasn't okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then she goes on to like make a comment. It's like, oh, like, well, y- yeah, you'll be fine. I mean, there's always like um, a weaker sibling, I guess. And she was comparing me to my sister. Mm. It's like, yeah, like you're you're just like the weaker one, but you know, it's fine. Like as time goes on, you'll learn to be stronger. I'm like. Okay, like gee, thanks. And then she said the same thing about my mom. Like, yeah, you're just like your mom. Like, she's always been a little more sensitive and weaker. Um, she just doesn't know how to handle things when life comes at her. I'm like, 
Okay, thank yeah, you. I would I would get clowned <laughs> on that when I was younger too. Why yeah. are you so sensitive all the time? Why are you yeah. this and that? But I th- I feel when you say that you do your s- you do your child or whoever a disservice because you're kind of more in tuned. As much as it's a curse, it is a blessing in a weird way. Yeah, no, I you agree. Know? I'm not sure if you no, agree with I that. I, I totally <laughs> agree with that. In fact, you know, one of my philosophies is you know you find the beauty in the darkness, whereas you know, a lot of these people, I come out of the different perspective more as like a person who's been around it a lot. Um, personally, my mom and my sister diagnosed and then having uh, personal friends that I've had, you know, commit suicide. So it's sure. it's been pretty, you know, not going through it, not being able to understand what they're feeling, but being able to see it and kind of um, understand it. Uh, from my perspective, I think it's, you know, weak leadership on our part. You know, it's so called the tough people yeah. um i see it as you know that they're just tough they're playing a front they're telling people what to do you know you got the doctors telling you you got this you got doctors telling you to take this drug or you have your parents telling you to be stronger to try to get through it but i think from people who haven't understood it it's more of a they should leadership through listening you know understanding that people who do have a hard time with anxiety or depression sometimes when they say it out loud and they say it to themselves it sounds way lighter instead of darkener inside their head where it's like oh it's only happened to me like you guys were mentioning you know Mm -hmm. i feel like one of the biggest things i've always heard is uh people saying like uh they don't um oh they think they're alone you know and that's the biggest thing so that's why i really like this podcast because you know people i was telling crystal that there are a lot of people out there that are just stuck in their rooms they don't know who to listen to or talk to but i think they just need to listen and just understand yeah and uh and i think you know through people talking they find solutions and it might not be a solution for a long term but sure. the, the thing they're going through right then and there so yeah 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 man well well said <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well put and i know um i know crystal was kind of a little worried to kind of tell you what's going on because yeah. that, that's a lot to not only deal with we have the same thing but mm-hmm. then uh, anorexia yeah is that did i say that right yeah okay that's and I didn't, I didn't know that was another yeah. thing you had to battle as well. Yeah. And where I did that like come from? Um, I honestly don't know. I feel like it's just, I've always been a perfectionist ever since I was like a little girl. Like even my mom was like, you know, you always wanted everything so perfect. Same. So I think it just came from that. And I feel, I think I was already depressed. So I wanted to find some sort of value in myself. So I went for like, you know, my image, you know. And I thought, like, in my head, like, oh, like, well, if I'm thin, if I'm skinny, like, I'll be beautiful. Like, uh-huh. people, like, pay attention to me and stuff. Um, and that's, like, the only thing that would keep me happy sometimes. Like, because I'd see a girl, like, oh, like, she's so much prettier than me. I'm like, oh, but I'm skinnier, so <laughs> it's mm. a little better. Or she's smarter. Because I d- compare myself a lot. I, s- I still do. I still struggle yeah. with that. Oh, we all do. <laughs> yeah. Nobody, like, the people who are like, no, man, it's all about me. I don't care what other people <laughs> think. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody cares what people think of them. Yeah. We want to look a s- look a certain way. Yeah. Maybe as you get older, that kind of trash leaves yeah. you. Yeah, it does. But you know, we're young. We're trying to figure it out. Yeah. We're trying to, you know, we want to look good. Right. And you know? yeah, and I thought being thin was like equivalent to like beauty and stuff. And yeah, I was so skinny. I used to be like a double zero. Oh so my! <laughs> I know. And you're pretty tall. Yeah. So I was. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't look great. In yeah. my mind, it's like, oh, I look good. I'm uh-huh. so thin. I can see my bones, and that's what I liked. And then, just like the thought of like gaining weight, just it would terrify. Me. I'd start crying, like just thinking about like gaining weight and eating too much. And if I felt like I started eating too much, like oh, I ate too much today. Like the next day, I just like oh, I just won't eat at all. Damn. So. Yeah, it was crazy. So I, I was interned for that, too, when I had to go to the hospital. It was for... Did they have um, to admit you for a while and kind of plump you up a little bit? Uh, <laughs> uh, not re- uh, They did... Th- I'm not going to say threaten me, but um, I did yeah. have a hard time eating while I was there. So they sure. just said, like, hey, like you have to start eating. If not, like we will have to put it in the feeding tube. <sighs> and that kind of, like, nope. Like, yeah, I'm going to yeah, start yeah. eating. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You got any yeah, steaks? Like, yeah, I'm not... <laughs> Please don't put a feeding tube in. Um, so it did get to that point. It's like, hey, like we, you have to start doing something. Sure. Or, you know. We're going to take matters. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah. I was in the hospital for that and also for, like, um, I was, like, 
suicide, like an attempted suicide. Uh-huh. Um, so you did attempt, or it was I just kind of super close, super close to it. Got you. Yeah. I think I've we, I've had moments where it was like yeah, yeah. Like if I it were to happen, I'd be totally cool. With yeah, that. I was yeah. I was in my kitchen. And then I had the pills in my hand, and then I also had, like, a knife next to me in the counter. Uh-huh. So, like, I had everything ready. Like, I'm so ready. But then, like, a thought came to me. Oh, I'm just going to call my dad. Mm-hmm. And then, because that time, like, my, my parents are divorced. I don't live with my dad. But I've always been, like, a daddy's girl. <laughs> so, I'm like, I'm sure, going to call sure. my daddy. And then, uh, I, it, <laughs> it was just a hard time. And I just sure. kind of broke down on him. And it's a good thing he... He lived nearby, actually, so he came over right away. My mom woke up, like, every whole family came, woke up, and came to the living room. We all started talking, and then had to go, like, to like, an emergency session the next day with my psychiatrist, mm-hmm. and that's when he told me, like, yeah, I'm going to have to, like, send you to uni. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you heard of uni. Is that the University of Utah Hospital? No, I don't know what uni is. Okay, so it's the University Neuropsychiatric Institute. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's like uh, right by where we work. It's like in the research park. Okay. Yeah. So that's where I had to go, <laughs> but it actually helped a lot. So yeah, I'm, I'm good. grateful that I did. How did? How was it when you started eating again? Was it kind of hard? To it was hard. Or were you like, oh, I'm gonna get fat? Or I remember I would. Or not fat. I'm gonna gain weight. <laughs> I would cry a lot. Yeah. Um. Boy, that's so crazy because some people have the opposite with food where they can't get enough. Oh, no. They're just, yeah. you know, no, and they're big. The and yeah. And <laughs> and it's no, like my mom would have wild. to like, yeah. like force me to eat. Like you have to eat. And then I just like cry at the table. <laughs> but I mean, I was scared of my mom, so I would eat the food. <laughs> <laughs> She's a scary. I love her, but she could be very scary. Hey, those are moms <laughs> for you. <laughs> so I'd eat and then, I mean, it got better. I wouldn't say that I have anorexia still, but I still have those lingering thoughts. Sure. For yeah, sure. Yeah. There are those dark thoughts that still kind of linger there. But I would say I would I have recovered from it. I'm actually trying to gain weight now. <laughs> like, I feel like I'm too thin. I'm mm-hmm. trying to gain weight, but it's, it's not as easy. It's not very easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's weird when, like, thin people are like, I'm going to gain weight, and they just hammer food down and they're just like i can't put on I the weight i can't yeah i can't gain the weight yeah people tell me that they're like dude you're so thin i'm like dude i've tried eating <laughs> and bulking yep. protein <laughs> shakes just out the door and just eat 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 and my body's like nope no yeah. out <laughs> it comes <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i can't hold and you have to realize too some people aren't just aren't built for that yeah like you just eat to when you feel full and leave it at that. Because mm-hmm. some people are just like, you got to you gotta eat, 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 yeah. eat. Sometimes your body's like, dude, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes my appetite is just weird. Like, it goes in waves. Like Mine too. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm I'll super hungry. I'll just put hungry. it down and then sometimes <laughs> I won't eat at yeah. all. I'll forget. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You forget to eat. And that's where I've been recently is like, I don't have an appetite right now. Like, I'm not hungry. Are you so depressed about something? <laughs> does that usually trigger it yeah is yeah when you I start think getting so. down and that's that does it, it makes for it me. worse yeah i won't for eat sure. when i'm bummed out just mm-hmm. like yeah i don't care yeah. so yeah like i've hardly had anything today like i tried eating some i got some stuff. food in there you want something <laughs> i'm okay thank you, you. Know, i'll make you i cooked some chicken the other day it's pretty good <laughs> <laughs> the same the same you let me know i'll feed you when we're done okay sounds <laughs> so good if you're hungry let me know <laughs> So what about, let's go back to, so you, you battled the eating, and then how how was your depression from, and all that from that, from that point after you got, started eating better, um, I should say? I mean, it was still there. I mean, uh-huh. I took care of one thing, but, you know, the other thing was still there, and my depression, my anxiety was still there. Um, and just like you, I had, go th- I went to therapy a lot take medications and I still do sure um does the meds help do you feel like it I f- makes feel you feel okay or yeah I feel like they do help me do it because I have tried going off of them like several uh-huh. times and it's just it's always a train wreck yeah <laughs> yeah it's I, uh, <laughs> I lived with a, a a roommate way back when and she has to take uh, I think it's Zoloft yeah that's what I take so she had to take it every day I'm like 
Yeah. And she's like, and it, it I'm not saying they're bad, because it really does work for some folks. Yeah. It, it helps them tremendously. Um, but for me, my I always got the uh, like side effects of everything. Oh, like my okay. mood got worse. I was mm. angry. I was a yeah. little. I was a bitch, man. <laughs> yeah. I was a mean <laughs> son of a bitch for a while. <laughs> mm. Just ang- I'm like, what is wrong with me? Because when you start tweaking with your brain like that, man, yeah. it's it could be really beneficial yeah. or it cannot. And then I kind of had a question for you guys. When you guys did go through that, like, um, you know, get prescription. That, that oh, yeah, definitely. You. <laughs> when you guys went to the doctor, did you guys, like, try a bunch of different medication or did you just try one? Yeah, it's like I trial and error. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, it's a lot yeah. of a lot of trial and error. Yeah. And that that's the part that kind of turned me off from it. I'm like, yeah. we're, we're really messing around here with the brain, with the most powerful thing that we know of. Yeah. And we're messing with it, like, we're turning things <laughs> off, turning things on, mm-hmm. and like it got to the point where I was just like, "Who yeah. am I?" Yeah. It was oof. Yeah, my uh, <laughs> last roommate went through something like that, and I kind of saw the effects of what was happening with him. And uh, he went so far where he was on like a schizophrenia medis- medicine, so it got like pretty deep. Mm-hmm. But at one point, he was just like, "I just now I'm just tired, you know. I feel unmotivated. Yeah. I feel like, you know, he just you could see it in his eyes too, which is really interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, when you put it into the drug perspective, it's yeah 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 it, it's it's kind of like um like the opiate issue mm-hmm. um it just changes you yeah you turn into a whole different person until you get it right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. once you get it right yeah man that it is awesome but when, yeah. i never they never could get it right yeah it when, just when you guys did go um was it the first thing that the doctor kind of said like okay you know you have this now it's time to go on this or did they give you other options as like therapy or you know, talk to your parents or try to find out the issue or was it pretty much, okay, we're going to put you on this? Um, well, I'll, I'll go first. Mm-hmm. For me, it was, they didn't know. Um, I, and it took till I was 30. I graduated school two years ago. What am I, 30? I forget how old I am. You're 33. 33. <laughs> so <laughs> I was 31 when I got diagnosed. So that whole time, I was like, what is going oh, gotcha. on? It was a mess, dude. My... And I always would, like, tell my parents, I'm like, man, just something's off. Mm -hmm. Like, I just, I want to be happy, but I'm not. And they're just like, oh, you know. (laughs) And and, and it's not their fault. I'm not putting it all Mm -hmm. on them. They just didn't understand. I don't know. I don't know. know. Maybe you're just, you know, you're a teenager. You're going through shit. Sure. (laughs) And you are. (laughs) But it was different because it it, it was just off. Mm -hmm. And I I knew it from the get-go. So that whole time, I was like, what am I dealing with? Because I'll be in great moods, mm-hmm. and then five minutes later, I'm a complete asshole. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. for no reason. Yeah. Mm. And it it finally clicked when that doctor read my diagnosis to me. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. That, that's what it is? Mm-hmm. He's like, and then I immediately, you know when you're like, life flashes yeah mm-hmm. everything yeah, came yeah. forward i was like <gasps> <gasps> yeah, yeah no wonder yeah. no wonder relationships were always a nightmare no wonder mm-hmm. everything was a mess no wonder school was hard no yeah. wonder this, yeah. this 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 and even though even though that i know what it is now it's still i i i have to check myself gotcha like don't be don't be an asshole. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> it's I mean I'm in here twenty four seven. Knock yeah. it off. Yeah. Knock it off. <laughs> and sometimes I'll even get mad at Crystal when we're at work. Yeah. I'm like <laughs> don't say anything. Yeah. <laughs> so so like uh, before thirty one, did you um did you recognize that? So when you were like, you know, I'd have a mood swing or when you were unhappy, did you recognize it then? Or was it after thirty one where you were like, Oh, that's why I acted out back then? Good point. Good question. Um no, I just figured that's who I was. I figured, oh, this must be, gotcha. I must be, this is my... A jerk. I'm a jerk, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm a mean person. Oh. And then when I realized what it was, I was like, uh, that wasn't my fault, you know? Yeah. None of that was my fault because I didn't know. It's kind of like a lot of things in life when you try to put, how do you get to two? Yeah. You got to add one and, oh, all right. Yeah. The whole time I was stuck at one plus one. Mm-hmm. I was like, <laughs> "What? What is going on?" <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, I'm not saying I'm not. I can't hold myself accountable for the way I was because yeah. I mean, I, I, 
I'm still apologizing to people yeah. um, that I've either dated in the past or I've said some mean shit. I I'm still I'm working on it daily. Like, hey man, I'm I'm sorry that I. This is what's what, what was going on. Right? Yeah. Oh man, I forgot about that long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. But but with people who are dealing with it, like with bipolar, you're you're sensitive. Yeah. You were the worriness that comes with it is ugh, mm -hmm. it's draining. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm mean to people on the phone at work, not mean but a little yeah. aggressive. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah stop yeah. calling us. We'll get to you. Yeah. And when I hang up, I'm like, oh. Don't yeah. be like that. Yeah. I know. Yeah. But everybody else is, yeah. they don't care. It, yeah. yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. That's how you got to be. I'm like, but it's not me, man. I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. It's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I apologize even to some of my classmates I was rude to um, because it it's the right thing to do. Um, yeah. When you explain what was going on, they go, oh, man, I, I had no idea, but... Just, and they always tell me we're good, man. Yeah, that, w that was a long time ago. Um, and it just makes me a better person. Yeah, because I don't, I don't want to be mean. Yeah, <laughs> look at that bug. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that 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 was for me. I'm not sure. Um, I how think it was for, for you. me, I was younger, obviously. So I think, I mean, my memory's not that great. I think we probably just started out with just therapy first. And then they saw that wasn't really helping. And they're like, okay, well, we do have to start adding some medications now. Yeah. And again, it was just that trial and error and just to find the right ones. Or sometimes it would work for a little bit. And like, okay, well, it's not working anymore. So I go, okay, we have to find a new medication. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I did a lot of therapy. I did a lot of group stuff as well. And like with, like, other girls, like, my age who are going through stuff. I know I went – I did go to a group that was just for, like, girls with, like, eating disorders – so that that helped a bit, but I don't know. So that's kind of how I went through it. And yeah, like I'm <laughs> the same. Um, yeah, when it gets really bad, I just, I've noticed this recently that I push people away when <laughs> I'm not in a good place, and, mm -hmm. and which is like the exact opposite of what I need. But I was talking to my mom about it because she suffers from depression, anxiety as well. And then she said, like, yeah, it's kind of weird, like, it's kind of, like, you're subconsciously, you're addicted to that pain and suffering. So you do these little things that would just add more to it. Yeah. Like me, I, I, I push people away, like, I drive them away, like, I do silly things that make them, like, oh, I don't want to hang out with this girl anymore. Yeah. So they just leave. But then, like, I look back and I'm like, crap. Like, I actually need people. Um, yeah. But so you have to remember that's not your fault. Yeah. Um, and I, I have to push that constantly it, with myself too. It's not your fault. The best thing you do is recognize it. Kind of just, all right, all right. Give give me give me a day. I have a friend that, um, she lives in a different country and she has the same thing. And I notice when she's having a moment, she's like, uh, I'm not gonna. I'll see you in a couple of days. All right, I'll mm -hmm. be here. I'm not going anywhere. But I do that too. I'm like, man, these nobody cares about me. Yeah. Psh, psh, nobody cares. And then <laughs> I start pushing everybody away. Right. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. What am I doing? Or, yeah, it's either my dep it's either my depression, or my anxiety. And recently, it's been my anxiety that's been kind of <laughs> driving people away. Like, honestly, I just get like so insecure about things, and then uh, and I feel so stupid. But like, I kind of throw those insecurities on the other people like whoa oh, this yeah. girl's too Gu much guilty yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. like so then they just leave and disappear i'm like oh, okay you ever try new mood mm -mm. i'll give you some <laughs> okay it's from um oh by the way on it.com <laughs> check that out um so it's a all natural like it just i usually take it before bed yeah because when you wake up you just wake up clear as day it's yeah. i'm not saying it's the cure-all cure-all but it helps and even during the day when you start to get, like, because I didn't want to depend on, like, um, Ativan or Xanax because mm -hmm. they gave me that, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, y y not to say it doesn't work for f folks, but there, the early onset of Alzheimer's, I guess, is that how you pronounce Alzheimer's. it? Alzheimer's. <laughs> um, <laughs> is kind of, s there's a little correlation with, like, benzos. That's what they call mm -hmm. them. That kind of 
brings an onset of it. Yeah. So it's very dangerous. It's a beneficial drug in a short time, but mm-hmm. long time. Yeah. 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 You're, you're out. But the new mood, I, I, I take it because I know work's going to be wild. <laughs> and um, especially when I go to always, bed. Always. Yeah, especially yeah. before I go to bed because my mind is like, hey. Yeah. yeah. And it kind of just, you know, brings you here. Yeah. So I I'll, know. I'll let you try some. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, because like, yeah, like I said recently, I from drove a, f- a friend away because yeah, I've just, b- just been so anxious lately. And then like. What are you anxious about? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it just like kind of comes on like I wish and you, people always ask me, well, what is it about? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. It's just it's just here. <laughs> you ever get that? It's just oh, yeah. You're saying, man, what, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally and get that. I, yeah, I just worry a lot and I, I overthink a lot. I know a lot of people do that. I'm not the only one. Um, but yeah, and I just feel terrible now. Like I can make. <laughs> oh well, though. Maybe you can show her this do. podcast when we're done. And be yeah. like, this is what's going on. You yeah, I think I come off like as needy sometimes. When I get really anxious and insecure. I'm like, like pay attention to me, like so. Sure, like, sure. Um, so I kind of, well I kind of told little them like, hey, like, well, if you don't want to hang out, like, we don't have to. And I told yeah. them it was okay because I felt like they're kind of. Gave me kind of like the cold shoulder, like th- what was going on. Like if you want to hang out, it's fine. Like I told them, like I don't know if they took it the wrong way. It's like, oh no, yeah, we can hang out later and stuff. And then we're supposed to hang out the next day, and like I never heard from them. It's like, oh shoot, like I probably <laughs> scared them off or something. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah, but it's good. Like I was saying earlier, that you recognize it. Like, I oops. Do I need yeah. to stop that? I've done that a lot. It's a lot like of work. Even it's a lot of work too. With um. Like you said, like with like relationships and stuff, like you know, it's just like dating. Like, I I usually end it pretty quick, cause like once I feel like oh, like I'm getting attached, like or I'm getting too vulnerable, I'm like okay, this person needs to leave, cause yeah. I don't, I don't want to get there. Yeah. Um, so Are I you I afraid to really kind of just let it out? Are you afraid to be vulnerable to like love and all that? Yes, because I'm afraid yeah. of the getting hurt part. <laughs> so like yeah, that comes so with love. Friend. I know, so I just mm-hmm. end it before yeah. it can even get there, and that's, that's like, like my hot cocoa. <laughs> you need hot water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's kind of like my that's been my self defense. Like oh, well I can't get hurt if it never gets anywhere, you know. So <laughs> yeah, guilty. Yeah, did it in I think every relationship I've been up into. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did it to my last one. I feel. I recently apologized to her just again. I'm like, man, I never really, I wasn't all the way in. Yeah. It was always, eh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. You know, you're always, and I've heard people see that. They're like, well, the relationship's going good, but we'll see. Like, yeah. We'll see what Ooh, happens. That's dangerous. <laughs> <man>. yeah. <laughs> like, why are you in it then? Yeah. <laughs> you know? I used to say that too, but not anymore. It's like, man, I'm just going to go for it. Yeah. Go for it, man. What do you got to lose? You yeah. Know? You know, so <laughs> have you no. ever gone through that cash? Have you have like spats of where you push people away and you're just you're over it or are you pretty? Um, you know, I, I don't really push people away. How ex- uh, however, you know, I'm also not kind of a chaser, I guess. You know, it's more of when I see someone going through something or, you know, trying to find a, a or a path through the journey in their life. Mm-hmm. I'm not like wanting to steer them you know i think that it's important that a lot of people just do what they feel is right or something and so even though you know people are pushing it away and you know you're recognizing that i honestly think it might be good in the long term just because if you didn't do it to that person maybe you'll do it to the next person Mm. so if you see it that way with this person the next time you'll be worried about it you'll be like oh you know i did it i already pushed someone away so this person i'm gonna focus a little bit more time and that comes like friendships or work employees or anything you know True, like true. Damn, man. <laughs> you sure you're not like a Zen master, bro? <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> like, well, like I said, you know, it's uh, for me, get, get I think that, the Mike. most important get thing get is like... Uh, there you go. Um, yeah, there we go. Now I can hear <laughs> you. <Yeah. laughs> you know, it, there's actually a lot of um, beauty, you know, in darkness from coming from my perspective. Right, right. Whereas like um, people who are going through something, there's a lot to learn from it. Sure. Uh, so even though, you know, I might not know what they're going through or anything, I can know how to maybe help, you know, not tell them what to do. But, you know, if one day they're just feeling a little down, and they just need a oh, coffee or weird. something, mm-hmm. you know, that's beneficial to them. And that honestly, in my mind, it's like, oh, that helped me. 
So it makes me feel good. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, it's interesting perspective, uh-huh. you know, seeing and being a part of it. And I think, you know, as a child, I went through it, but not as like a long term. I recognized it, you know, earlier. And then just kind of, you know, why was it, you know, work out and listen to people of how to get motivated and stuff like that. And for me, it was like, I never heard it from, you know, family members or friends like, oh, you're doing a good job. It always came from myself, like telling myself and motivating myself. So it's, it's interesting, yeah. you know, after living through college, you don't, or after going through college and then graduating, you don't have anyone after that saying like, oh, good job. Or yeah, here's an yeah. A for working so well, you know, uh-huh. after college, you're dropped off and you're like, good luck. <laughs> you, know? you know, I went through that too, man. It's funny you say that because when the college ended, like, I was, in, I was in school forever, dude. Mm-hmm. And then when it was over, I was, mm-hmm. it's like when a uh, soldier comes back from war. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good luck exactly. to you. <laughs> That's yeah. how I felt too. <laughs> yeah, I went through a bad spelt of just, man, I was down. Yeah. You know, I didn't, my routine was gone. I didn't, mm-hmm. I wasn't responsible to show up to anything. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, it's, you have your life. Yeah. And it's, it's on, it's on you now. Yeah. And it's like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's the scariest part, too. Yeah. And I think a lot of that comes from, you know, schooling telling you you're doing a good job, you know, right. back having your back. And as, as m- like, nice that is, I feel like it doesn't show the reality of the world. And, you know. Right. And and w- like you guys were mentioning, you know, a lot of people do go through um, anxiety, but they don't want to talk about it. It might not be severe. However, you know, you guys mentioned people are like, oh, yeah, keep pushing forward, keep going. Sometimes I find that those people are actually, you know, very like are the dad- worst. Exactly, yeah. and, and that's th- that's their kind of way to deal with life is like, you know, kind of go with the Navy SEAL approach of just go. Yeah, you know, do it, do it, go, go, yeah. go, mm-hmm. go, go. Yeah, yeah, and I notice that more and more with those people who are very like bossy and like this, 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 this. It's like t- you probably got some something you're not dealing oh, yeah. with, yeah. or you're afraid to admit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And those are the people I worry about the most. Yeah, because I think it comes from what, like you guys mentioned too. It's like recognizing it. You know, yeah. maybe those people are the ones who don't recognize it and instead mm-hmm. put it away. You know, yeah. hide it, and then they're just like, all right, let's see how I deal with today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. And then they don't like reflect on the changes of the how they're affecting other people, and that's you know, important. It is. It, man. Dude, are you sure you're not? Yeah. <laughs> no. Are you sure you don't? Did you study philosophy? <laughs> yeah, oh, I, I love it. I love it. Bro. Yeah, dude, you're speaking very wise words that a lot of people are afraid. They're afraid to admit it. They're yeah. afraid that, like we were talking about earlier, that oh, pe- wh- who, what are people gonna think about? Yeah. yeah, they're gonna think I'm crazy and I'm into weird stuff and <laughs> I'm gonna hurt somebody. Yeah, and that that's n- really never the case. We're not crazy people. We're just we're in here. Yeah. A yeah. lot. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's the hard part is to not be in here. Yeah. And that's all it is. Yeah. And when you're depressed, especially when you're bipolar, you're in here too much. Mm-hmm. You're just like, oh, mm-hmm. it's it's draining. Yeah. But I mean, it is hard when you do meet those people who do think that way, though, because then you just kind of shut down again and think oh everyone else is gonna think that way too because um mm-hmm. i think i mentioned to you that i was dating a dentist oh you get a f- ni- you, i mean your teeth are nice <laughs> you get free cleaning Some no bleach on those, <laughs> those <laughs> puppies <laughs> <laughs> no so i did date a dentist for just for a little bit and then he saw some of my scars uh-huh. so he asked about it and i'm like oh crap i have to tell him so then i told him um <laughs> he didn't take it like well, he wasn't like mean about it, but he just didn't do it, take it very well. So he told me like, "Oh, like, well, that that kind of worries me a bit." I'm like, like, okay, okay, you know. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, "Yeah, like, well, I just don't want to have to like be with someone like I'm gonna have to take care of when they're down." Like he's like talking like all this future stuff. Like, yeah, like I don't want a wife who can't take care of the kids because she's depressed in bed. Like, I still want to have to, like, babysit someone and coddle them and take care of them. Like, oh, like, wow, okay How'd then. How did that make you feel? Well, it made me feel, like, really bad. I'm like, yeah. wow, okay. So then I was just, like, even, like, just afraid to say anything anymore. And then he told me, oh, like, what does it run in your family? I'm like, well, yeah, like, my mom has it and stuff. Like, oh, like, yeah, that's that's a little worrisome. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, some so people are, like, brutally honest. Yeah. So, like. I don't like those people. You know those people who are super blunt? Yeah. 
yeah. I've met a lot of people like, oh, I'm just blunt. I just tell it like it is. Stay away from me, please. <laughs> yeah. I don't like that. Yeah, so that, that, that it tells hurt me. me. Yeah, that tells me you don't think before you speak. Yeah. And you're not, not to harp on this dentist dude. I mean, he was blunt, but he wasn't sensitive. Like, oh, I had no idea. Yeah. Well, do you, how do you handle it? That's how it should have went. Like, how do you, how do you handle it? How yeah, he, he didn't care. He was just like worried, yeah. like, oh, I'm going to have to deal with this girl. Uh-huh. You know, <laughs> I'm going to have to take care of her. So, yeah. yeah. When the day oh, comes, he, he needs help. And <laughs> that yeah. did happen, actually. Oh, he was see? having a bad day one time. We went to like a party. I noticed he was off, but I didn't mention anything because we were just surrounded by people. Like, well, I want to bring it up now and in front of everybody. So, you know, just give him a space. And then we're finally on our way back to his place. And then I asked him in the car, I'm like, hey, like, are you, are you okay? What's going on? Like, like, yeah, I've just been, like, stressed with, stressed with work. Like, I'm, just, I'm a little down, blah, blah, blah. Were you like, hmm. Yeah. Hmm. And How then the tables have turned, friend. He actually blamed it <laughs> on me. I'm like, oh, like, well, why didn't you tell me? Like, I, you know, we could have talked or something. Like, yeah, well, you didn't. He's kind of, he kind of blamed it on me. Like, you didn't do much to help either, Mike. Oh my God! Okay, really? yeah, he yeah. Turned, it it <laughs> turned it around on me. Yeah, turned it around me. Like, yeah, like, well, you weren't very like happy or motivating. Like, well, because I'm the type of person I kind of go off of other people's energies. Yeah. So if other people are down, like I automatically go down, or if energies are up, then I'm up. So I feed off of other people's right. vibes. So yeah, I was yeah. obviously feeding up off of his vibe. I know something was off, so then I started kind of feeling off. Like, yeah, you weren't much help. Like. You weren't <laughs> happy. You weren't making me laugh. Blah, blah blah. I'm like, well, I didn't know what was going on. You weren't telling me anything. And I've told him before. Like I kind of go off of other people's moods. So yeah, after that was the last time we hung out, and I told Good. him like it's done. <laughs> so yeah. like you expect me to take care of you and be there for you and make sure you're okay, but you won't do it for me. I'm like, okay. <laughs> See what happens, <laughs> dude. It's probably the best thing that that didn't work out. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like I said, he's probably dealing with. I don't yeah, know. he's probably got something going on that he doesn't want to admit either. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's dangerous. It's, I, it's funny you say about the energy thing. Mm-hmm. I remember when you came into work that one day, and I I wasn't in a bad mood. <laughs> 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 the energy's changed. Yeah, yeah. I you were like, hey, and I looked at you. I was like, what? And you're like. Okay, I can feel the energy in this room. This is going to be a bad day. I was like, how dare you say that? <laughs> I'm just tired. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. I'm just, I'm just so sensitive to like, other people's feelings that it, it rubs off on me, and I, I hate it. You know, I don't know. Maybe it is a blessing and a curse. I could feel other people's feelings, but I mean, it's also draining. It is. So I'm like, ah. Oh. Because. <laughs> yeah, I know for me, I'll walk into a room sometimes. I'm like, oh boy, yeah. this is going to be interesting. <laughs> mm-hmm. Everybody's mad. Everybody's tense. Especially in CT. Oh. <laughs> Especially. Oh, you know, like, oh, okay. I, I enjoy <laughs> what we do, but that, that place just, yeah. they need to play like soft music yeah. in the air or <laughs> yeah. put some aroma, yeah. candles. I think we just need a freaking window. Oh, or I think window. we need sunlight. We need to yeah, see the sky and the grass and yeah. something. That that place. So my friend that lives in the other country, her and her mom. So she's an architect, and uh-huh. her mom is a um, like a master feng shui person. Oh. So they work together, and they go to. I think this is what they do. I haven't got the whole gist of it, but they go to companies and they go. Because they're really into energy. Like Asian culture is really into mm-hmm. like energy mm-hmm. and yeah. how things are set up, and. We were t- I was talking to her about that. I was like, you know, there's no windows. Is yeah. I don't mind the dark part. I oh think because it kind of like I'm calms really your mood a little oh bit. Oh, I'm yeah. the opposite. I can't be in the dark because uh, it gets me. Or the dim. Really I shouldn't say we're yeah. in like pitch black dark <laughs> like with night vision <laughs> goggles on. <laughs> it gets yeah. me like tired and kind of down if I'm in the dark. It's just like, oh, like, it's time to go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But being under fluorescent lights for 12 yeah. hours, not seeing sunlight. Yeah. Everybody gets pissed off if you go. I wouldn't say pissed off, but you know they get stressed. They're like, "Oh man, they had to leave. We're busy." Yeah, you I know? mean, you guys are always all like, um, you know, high tense, and just because you got patients coming in and out, and so you're already at that level. And then so if someone walks in and they're just, oh, you're already tense. Just one yeah. little spark could make you go. A oh little bit. yeah, game on. Yeah, exactly. 
And yeah, it, it's just like that. But I was telling her, I was like, if we could just get a window, if we could just a see window. a sign of hope. That's all we want. <laughs> yeah. That's all it really is. Like, <laughs> oh, there is something out there. <laughs> yeah. You know? And she was telling me, she's like, if you look at most hospitals, most facilities, not the newer ones that are coming mm-hmm. up, there's no windows in the ER. Yeah. There's no windows yeah. in the room. Um, the windows are limited because they want to protect their equipment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, d- I, I didn't understand that part, but I don't know if sunlight affects everything, but they want to protect the equipment. They don't want to protect the people. Yeah. I was like, damn, that's, that's some truth to that. <laughs> yeah. Because even it's in like operating rooms, I don't know money. if you've ever been in an operating room, but boy, talk about high stress. Yeah. yeah. Maybe if you sure. got a moment just to be like, <laughs> right. All right, I cool. never, I never <laughs> liked going to the OR. I'm like, nope, it's not for me. Yeah. So I don't know if the window uh, allows small particles or bacteria to come in. That's why they're not there. But it's true. It's so true. And it's crazy that you feel that way, too. A lot of people feel that way. It's like our our health system, just the way buildings are built, it's wrong. Yeah. yeah, it's backwards, man. <laughs> it's even so even when you look at it too, with they're prioritizing the students, you know, having the windows, you know, that whole new building is gonna come in. They get windows and you know, yeah. the employees. I just feel bad, you know. It's like oh, yeah, they're yeah. in the trenches. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're just. And it, it's it's weird that human beings need to see that. They need mm-hmm. to be. They need to look outside. Like, all right, cool. It's yeah. There. It's there. Yeah. It's yeah. There. And I was telling her too. I was like. You know, it feels like I'm in lockdown, a prisoner, for 12 hours. Yeah. Like, this must be what it feels like. Yes. You go nuts, dude. Yeah. You can't leave that department. No. And uh, that's something I do miss from, like, my x-ray job. Like, I got to be all over the hospital, like, doing these x-ray portables. And Mm -hmm. I get to look out the window in the patient's room. So I just kind of look out. I'm like, okay, it's so nice out there. And just, honestly, just walk around, see different people, different faces and everything. But yeah, I can see Tina. I'm, I'm stuck in that one room yeah. all day. That <laughs> in all fairness, it's a it's a great hospital, but that room is built wrong. Yeah, I don't know why we're even right there. <laughs> and I honestly, know. I think it you know, awful. if they had that option to move it, you know, uh, they would maybe. But I feel like it's <laughs> just set there. You know, yeah. that CT yeah. machine is just you can't yeah, move it. It's done. Yeah, it costs yeah. so much money to yeah. just yeah. pick it from here to there. Yeah. Yeah. It we sh- what they should have done is had a whole separate building for CT. Yeah, like because mm-hmm. they'll they'll drag patients from all over that place <laughs> to that little <laughs> section. Yeah. yeah, why not drag <laughs> them out to a building? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, it's God, it's just bad. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, and I don't get it because diagnostically, where radiation, where uh, imaging is headed, is more CT. Yeah, I mean. I've talked about this a lot. This <laughs> is just a theory, not even a theory, a hypothesis that sooner or later, x-ray is going to be a thing in the past. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it. not only is it, I don't know. I damaging mean, it, you know, it's a lot of radiation too. I mean, x-ray, I think the only reason they keep it around is because of the radiation is a, a lot low lower. Dose. Oh, got yeah. you. Oh. And CT is a lot higher, yeah. but... You get more out of a CT than you do an X-ray. Yeah. Like when it comes to surgeries and planning, and mm-hmm. it's just where it's headed. Um, not to take, not to scare people. I mean, X-ray is going to be around forever, hopefully. But the more and more I look at it, we're doing scans now for hands. Yeah. Yeah. Ankles. Yeah. Like what? What are we doing? Like this is X-ray. <laughs> yeah. X-ray does this. Even, <laughs> even like the COVID thing, I'm like, why are we? CTing, why are we doing a CT? Just do an x ray. Start mm. there. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think they do because I remember when I was still on x ray, we do they go up okay, to the okay. units and we had to papper on, uh-huh. go inside the room and take the x rays. Uh, um, so I think they probably do that first and then, like, if they see something, they'll come down to CT. But yeah. I know a lot of my x ray coworkers are still having to go into like COVID patients and stuff. Oh, COVID. <laughs> go away already. <laughs> I know, seriously. <laughs> Just go. <laughs> you know, it's it's 
Yeah, I don't I don't know why we went off on that subject, but we <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we sure did. Yeah. We're just griping about work. Right? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, you you got to though. You gotta yeah, yeah. gripe about it. Just oh. like yeah. with depression, anxiety, uh, you gotta. I've let a lot out to Cash <laughs> about work. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I'm sure he's like, oh, psh, I get it. Yeah, I get it. You yeah. have to, because I've talked to people who are in the medical field, and I'm laying it out there, <laughs> especially that plane crash that happened recently, mm, and we scanned yes. those folks. Yeah. Uh, I was telling people, and they're like, that's depressing. Why are you even talking about it? I was like, I need to talk about yeah. it. That is some shit you don't ever want to see yeah. or even hear about. Yeah. No. You know? Yeah, it's scary. Yeah, I, I did the same. Like, I need to kind of let it out. So I just told my mom. Honestly, my mom's the only person I talk to. It's all right. I mention her a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she's like, yeah, she's like the same, like, like no, like you're gonna make me start crying. They just like stop. Like, well, I need to tell somebody. <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah. I uh, luckily, I had a therapy session, like after that happened, and I was telling him, I'm like, man, this, this is heavy. Mm-hmm. And he was like, if this still is bothering you by our next, let's let's work on it. Yeah. And he is such a good. Oh my God, he is so good at what he does, and he's like, you're not the only one that. Because he deals with a lot of people in our healthcare, he's like, you'd be surprised. It could be the smallest thing that people are just like, I, I can't, I don't yeah. want to do this anymore. And yeah. then there's some things where it's like, pff, yeah, whatever. I think I don't know if it's this crazy. happens yeah. to you, but this is something I don't mention to people either. Uh, I think I've only mentioned to like a couple of friends, but like it's hard being like in the medical field. At least like for me, it's like and we see like these young people like pass away and stuff and they had like that one i don't know if you heard about like the mother of three and she was like passed away on her birthday Ugh. you heard about that one yeah she no. was she was so young yeah she was only like i'm not gonna mention i don't know like hipaa thing yeah um, at least no names yeah, or um, the facility yeah. <laughs> um but yeah she passed away and she, oh, she left behind her three young kids and her husband and then like in my state i was already kind of in a bad place when this happens like in my mind like why couldn't that have been me you know like why like why didn't you take me instead you know she had a lot yeah. going for her she was a mom she was a wife i'm sure she had a beautiful life like i'm not leaving anyone behind I'm like just take me um yeah. so and then i get stuck in those dark thoughts so sometimes that happens when i'm around like the death and mm-hmm. like oh man like it should have been me <laughs> Yeah, I. I don't know if I that happens to you all too. The time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, I'm. I mean, I've been in the medical field since day one. Since I was a little kid, I've mm-hmm. had surgeries, and it just. And I'm pretty strong, but lately, some of the things I've seen, I'm like, man, I'm. I don't want to see this anymore. You know, this is too much. Yeah. And I'm sure, like we said, those fools, those not fools, but <laughs> yeah. those individuals who are, you know, all like, nah, it's yeah. not. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they go home and be like, oh, God, yeah. what are we doing? You know, it's to see something like we saw with that crash. Mm-hmm. Us, uh, it was too so much. So painful to watch. It's too much for me. I, I was I wanted to go home for the rest of the day. Yeah. I was not feeling it after that. And I hope. Sooner or later, in the medical field as a whole, they realize we need to have therapy on board twenty four seven. Yep. Uh, I don't care how silly it sounds. I don't care if it's I stub my toe, <laughs> and you know I'm not. Uh, you know it kind of just ruined my day. Yeah. I need to talk to somebody. Yeah. I don't care how dumb or silly anybody thinks it is. There needs to be a change. Yeah. That's what I uh, really appreciated about the University of Arizona. You know, any health sciences student had that option for any therapist. So if you, you know, were down and they, they understood, you know, the healthcare system is, is it's hard. You know, you see the things that n- no one sees, it, you know, on a daily. Yeah. And they don't even think about it, too. You know, they just go through their normal day. They don't, they don't really know how many people are going in. They don't know how many people are going out, how many people are having problems. So it was nice to see that, you know, some universities do see that. But you're right, you know, for employees, they should have someone there 24-7, you know, yeah. just if anyone just needs to talk. Because, you know, no one needs to sit there for an hour, you know, all the time. But for 10 minutes, you know, that that helps a lot. Yeah. yeah. Something something to give them just that little bit of 
that motivation yeah, like, yeah that you know, reassurance yeah yeah exactly mm-hmm. that reassurance like hey look i i get where you're coming from try this out mm-hmm. hey work on that for the day see how it works out mm-hmm. they don't need to like you said you don't need to be for you can't leave your job for an hour yeah like yeah. i need to go talk. yeah you know, <laughs> yeah there, there has to be a limit to <laughs> it yeah uh, maybe when you get off your shift you can yeah mm-hmm. invest more time into it but there there needs to be teams more than ever yeah because things are only getting weirder and weirder yeah man. like really yeah. weird yeah <laughs> what's going <laughs> yeah. on and the, you know and that doesn't help you know with COVID too with everyone you know kind of staying away from each other I feel like this is the time where we need to be you know closer yeah, exactly know. Especially in our little room, I'm like, mm-hmm. this is how COVID spreads. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're so confined. I say in it there. all the time. Like when all those doctors and residents show up, I mean, bless them, they're trying to learn. I get yeah. it. But I was like, this is how it spreads, oh, yeah. man. Yeah. I don't know where they you've been, where they've been. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they have like the need just like to touch everything. Yeah, yeah. And oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. When I see them pick up the phone with their everything. gloves, and I'm just like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. and they're in their gowns, leaning on it. I was yeah. like, yeah. get out of yeah. here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like toddlers, like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh so man. Yeah, yeah, I hope. I don't know. I hope. I hope something changes sooner, or l- sooner than later, because th- I, I don't think COVID's going away anytime mm-hmm. soon. Unfortunately, I think not. it's gonna be here for the rest of the year, maybe till next. It's not going away. Yeah. Um. Even when they try to let up all oh of a yeah. sudden. Mm-hmm. I don't know how these numbers are found, but all of a sudden it's like boop, 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 boop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, back to where we started. Yeah. yeah. You know? And that, that's something that we <laughs> kind of talked about. It's like, should that be public information? Like, I don't think it should. I don't think so either. And it's just because different interpretations that people can get from it. Right. So it's And it's not good. Yeah, people s- turn to, to barbarians. Yeah. Like, stay away from me. Yeah. Where's your mask? Where's your mask? I get the mask thing. I was against it, but you know, when I go into public places, I wear. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm walking yep. outside. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not wearing one. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm outside. It is right. interesting though, because on the topic of like anxiety, it shows that people, you know, are scared. You yeah. know, inherently, you know, even though yeah. if they walk the planet and they go to their job and they're just doing their nine to five and they come back home, then they're like, oh, I'm not scared. And then you put the mask on, and then they realize, you know, I have a life, you know, right. I'm scared. They kind of realize that life is more important or something. I'm not too sure what it sparked it. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah when I put on a mask, I'm like, all right, I yeah. feel safer all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Like, what? Where is this it coming from? It's a little security yeah. blanket. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It could yeah. protect your image. It could protect, you know, people looking at you different. Because, uh, you know. That is true. You get yeah. a lot of kickback if you don't wear one now. Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. We, what are we turning into? <laughs> I don't know. Who's ever writing this? How dare you? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I, I think it's just the beginning, <laughs> but I think it's going to be interesting because <sighs> you do see people kind of appreciating where they are a little bit more than their life before. You know, people that were those bullhorn people and that were angry and, you know, hiding it through that way. Right. I feel like they're kind of seeing it now. Yeah, that you're not immune. Yeah. Like yeah, you you're not invincible. Yeah. yeah. And... I don't know. Maybe that's the programming. Who's ever programming and downloaded this virus? <laughs> yeah. <onto> yeah. Us? <laughs> um, I think like that. I think yeah. we're just little computer. We talked about <laughs> yeah. this. Yeah. It, it <laughs> I think we're just a little, we're little computers, and we got downloaded, mm-hmm. and you know, we we caught a virus. <laughs> Until the virus clears out. Yeah. You know, we're stuck in it. Yeah. You know, uh, look at a computer. It does the same thing. Yeah. yeah. You get a virus. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> have yeah. to take it in. And sometimes you can't get rid of it. Yeah. And that's the scary part, too. I don't know if we're going to get rid of this. I don't yeah. know if it's just going to... Yeah. I mean, the Spanish... What was it? The Spanish, Spanish influenza. Influenza went away for decades. Yeah. And now it's back. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's just all interesting. Yeah. Because yeah. no one knows. Yeah, no one knows. No one knows. It's so crazy what's going on with the world. And it's just... I don't know. I mean, it's kind of cool that we get to be like, a part of it and experience it. But at the same time, it's like scary. I'm like, oh gosh, like it's just so much happening and going on all at the same time, like all at once. Yeah. So. <laughs> Man, I don't know. <laughs> I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful, you know, human beings, w- we're good at it. Yeah. We're good at figuring things out. Um, hopefully we don't turn ourselves totally against each other. Yeah. That's my biggest fear. Yeah. Like you were saying, 
two seconds ago, all of a sudden, if you're not wearing a mask, it's like, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> you know, everybody's like yeah. beating their chest. Uh, yeah, you know? yeah, right. we're seeing it everywhere. Yeah, yeah. 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 all of a yeah. sudden they're aggressive towards each other, and instead of, hey, do you got a mask? You put one on. I that happened to me. I went to a store. And I went in real quick. That's when I didn't want to wear a mask. I was like, yeah, never do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then um, the lady came at me. She's like, you can't be in here without a mask. That's yeah. that's the rule. And I gave her the biggest <laughs> look. Yeah, like, who are you? Who are you? She's like, <laughs> who are you? Yeah, are you? yeah. yeah. <laughs> who are you? <laughs> yeah. And uh, she's like, we offer one for a dollar at the. I was like, oh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I storm. And she even told, I could hear one of the employees. She's like, follow him. I was yeah. like, no, you don't need to follow me. Oh my gosh. And so yeah. I went out to my car, <laughs> put him back on. But I get it. Oh, it, no, it, I, I, I totally it. had to I understand that, too. I, I had to yeah. go through that, too, because when I went back to Arizona the, over the weekend, you know, everyone in Utah is kind of walking around. You know, they're not as scared. They're a little bit better. But in Arizona, everyone is scared. You know, they are in their house. They're bolted up. They're wearing masks everywhere. Yeah. People are wearing gas masks. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, in, I don't get the in gas like 120 mask degree yeah. weather. I've seen Gosh. some with like the double filters in my it's not like that. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it just kind of put it in perspective because I work for healthcare and, you know, I don't see it as crazy as it, they're saying it is. Right. But then when you go out and see people really scared, it's like, okay, you know. Yeah. Well, that I goes back to, I think that's what you're trying to go into is educating the population who's not in healthcare. Yeah, exactly. I think that's such a huge it's thing that we need right now. It's transparency. A big flaw. Yeah, huge flaw. Yeah. Especially when we kind of talk about, you know, people wanting to do you to do one thing. You know, they, they say, this is how you get successful. This is, you know, get a job, nine to five, do this, and then you'll be successful and you'll be happy. But I think yeah, that... quote is that happy part. Yeah, exactly. And it's you not for everybody. <laughs> no, it's lie. not. No, exactly. <laughs> we have been fooled yeah. time and time again. Yeah. So. But it's, it's, you know, they don't understand that there's options, there's different ways of success, you know, right. ha there's different ways of happiness, money isn't everything. But I, I did want to ask you this because I was kind of curious with both of you, mm -hmm. but what would like define happiness or end week in your guys's mind because maybe I, you know question. maybe people have different understandings of what those words mean and so they don't know, really know how to apply the lessons or learning because their definition is a little different so maybe you know if your happiness could connect with someone else's or something great question you want to go first <laughs> yeah. um so i think so the way i define happiness is like a light like that's my happiness like because when i'm happy i feel like i'm a light and people even said like oh you're just like so light you're you're glowing I'm like oh yes that's because i'm happy <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Nailed thank you it. so much <laughs> um so happiness is like a, a light for me and i just like i close my eyes and like i see it so um that's my definition and you're just at peace you know and like I'm trying, I'm trying to describe it, like how I feel it. No, no, take yeah. your time. But like I can't everybody really come up with the words. Like you're saying, everybody has a different yeah outgo on it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, peace and light. I feel like that's. Are how you I would talking like happiness. internal peace or external? Or I a think bit of it's both? all about. Um, and most importantly, it'd, it'd be internal peace, because um, that's where it starts. Like no matter what's going on around you, you have to start with that internal peace. Mm -hmm. So that's where it'd be, and then. I mean, um, the external would be nice too, but you, right. you can't control the external. True. Mm. Uh, I think for me, fu for my piece is doing the things, um, and I didn't understand this. This I'll kind of put a story inside a story. So I have a younger brother who unfortunately is part of the opiate epidemic and the heroin epidemic. And... He always told me he, as much as it sound as bad as it looks and what he's doing, he's always told me I get to do what I want to do when I want to do it, and I don't have anybody telling me how I should be living. And I never got that. I'm like, dude, like you're doing, you're doing drugs. Like you're mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. you're pissing your life away, for what? And then as lately I've. I I don't know if he knows how much he affects me with some of the things he says cuz I take it in. Yeah. Some people yeah. Are yeah. come at me and they're like, "Oh, you're not listening. Trust me. I listen yeah. a lot." And the more and more I've been alone 
and I didn't do any of this for over 10 years and and now that I've gotten back into it it's like he's right mm-hmm. and when I get to do this we get to talk like mm-hmm. and I get to do music the way I want to do music when I want to do it there's no one telling me you got a deadline mm-hmm. that for me yeah. is true happiness yeah that's because you're doing what you want to do yeah just that freedom yeah i don't have a free feeling and i have lately i've had a really hard time with work and i've always kind of said this i was like i don't like i said i don't not appreciate what i have but it gets harder and harder to be on somebody else's schedule oh yeah like this is when you get to have a day off this (laughs) is the time you have to come into work yeah and you have to put in your vacation and hopefully you get it yeah it's yeah. annoying like it's sh- huh <laughs> yeah. you right like i can't pick what days i want yeah off. And yeah and, and yeah. W- even when you're sick oh you're sick you better call in and you yeah. know you're not going to get paid and it's like i'm sick yeah you get like yeah. scared to call in yeah, you're like do yeah. i have to you, you get and scared it, you, you, yeah you don't you feel c- good you don't take <laughs> yeah. care of your health <laughs> yeah you're right like, oh i got i got bills to worry yeah. about and everybody's got bills yeah. but that for me when I'm on my time and I'm doing the things I like to do and yeah. nobody's, don't get me wrong, there's reasons for schedules for mm-hmm. certain things. Oh yeah. But when it comes to work, I struggle. Not because I'm not, I don't, I'm not lazy. Yeah. It's, you just kind of wake up more. Like, what what am I doing? Who am I living for? You know, I'm making a corporation tons of money. Billions of dollars, if not. And I get... Just a tiny bit. Yeah, yeah. Mayb- maybe that's you the know? blessing in the curse of COVID. You know, it's kind of yeah. like people are waking up and realizing it, and not just us. I think it's also employers. You know, people are being like, "Wait, why is this guy suffering, and why am I up here and they're yeah. down there?" So I think it's a little bit of a wake up. You hope because yeah, you don't know. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people with a lot of money who are still like, mm-hmm. "Nope." Yeah. And I'm they're the ones sharing. making the rules, and they're like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they're the ones in control, and here we are. Okay, I got to work a 12-hour shift, <laughs> yeah. and these are my days off, and I got to plan everything around somebody else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, to me, bothers me oh a yeah. lot. More yeah. and more as I get older, and I'm tired of it already. Yeah. Yeah. That actually happened to me on Sunday. Like I had a little meltdown, like a little you know, panic attack, and it happened oh. at night. And then, like, my mom's like, oh, like, you should call in tomorrow. I'm like, no, like, I can't. Like, I can't miss work. Blah, blah. I'm like, well, think about it. Like, if you go in, like, are you going to do a good job? I'm like, right. No. <laughs> like, I, I know I will. Like, I know myself. I know I wouldn't do a good job. And yeah. I just kind of hinder the rest of the team as well. Mm-hmm. Like, well, call in. But, yeah, I was afraid, too. I'm like, oh, he's going to get mad. He's going to get upset if I call in. Um, I've only called in like once before, but I still got that anxiety. I'm like, oh, he's gonna be angry at me. He's thinking yeah. a bad employee. Um, right. But yeah, uh, yeah I called even in. that like gets in you, and, and yeah. it shouldn't be like that. I'm like, hey man, or or miss, I'm I'm having an off day, and it'd probably be beneficial that I don't come in. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I you know I apologize, but I, I'm I'm trying to look out for not only me but the team. The team and the patients. Right. Like right. Because. Yeah, when, like when we're in that mindset. When you're hurting, everybody's yeah. hurting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, damn, Cash, great question, man. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> it's what, just what's it for you, though? Hmm. W- what What does it happiness. for you, your, your happiness? You know, I've never really thought of that until now. Honestly, my happiness comes from, honestly, like, learning about people. You know, my uh, I heard this one quote where you learn from... I've brought it up three times now, but, like, you learn from the suffering, you know? Sure, uh, sure, sure. My biggest uh, quote that I've ever got was first, it's like, you're supposed to endure to the end. Mm -hmm. And when I read that, you know, I first thought, you know, you're supposed to just go. You're supposed to just live it. And then I started asking people, like, what endure meant to them. And a lot of it meant, you know, suffering. And um, when I heard that, I was like, oh, we are put here to suffer. You know, everyone suffers differently. Mm -hmm. Some suffer more than others. Some, you know go through life happily but at the end of the day you know we're all going to be one and we're all going to understand so yeah. and so if you're a person that doesn't understand you know it's not it's not bad but it doesn't give them a perspective and you know people will shun them away in my opinion because they're like 
just need to listen. So yeah. happiness comes from understanding the suffering, not, you know, total being suffering, but yeah, yeah. not trying to fix it either. Right? Yeah. And that man, dude, what you, you <laughs> need to, you, <laughs> you need to speak up more. About <laughs> yeah. well, it's, it's just been interesting. You, you need to educate some of these <laughs> folks around that workplace. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're, on, you're on point, my man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But you know, again, yeah. it's just always just observing. I've always been that kind of guy to observe people instead yeah, of you know same. push my way. And and so it's it's interesting to being here when you observe people and they truly do look like they're suffering more. Yeah. Maybe not in the terms of. I think it's more their p- position in life. You know, where I had a lot of friends that expecting to get eighty thousand dollars out of college. They thought they earned it. They thought they got it. And the moment they got rejected, it just all came crashing down on them. Mm -hmm. And I think that people here are just a little bit more scared about their position in life. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Which isn't wrong, you know. No, no, no. It's just recognizing it versus not. Yeah. And, man, I don't don't even know how to follow that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You hit hit it right on point. I I think to sum everything up that we've done, oh, listen. Mm Mm-hmm. Just listen. Don't ever try to tell somebody, get over it. Yeah. It, what I've learned most of all in everything is people who are depressed or anxious, the worst thing you could do is tell them, get over it. Yeah. What do you, get over it. Because that makes it worse. Yeah. That it does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the trigger of like, all right, well, F you too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You really don't. You didn't, like you just said, you didn't listen. Yeah. You're not yeah, listening. Exactly. And I think society as a whole has done damage like that. We yeah. really don't listen. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like, really listen. Like, you sit there and just... Put yourself in that position. Yeah. You know, like... What if it was you? It. Yeah. And some fool told you, to get over it. Mm-hmm. Get over it. You know? Yeah, I feel like that's, like, a bad phrase, too, because it just kind of puts it back on that person. Like, well, like, there is something wrong with me. Why can't I get over it? So it just yeah. makes you feel even worse about yourself, like... Like, I'm good for nothing. Like, I can't get over it. Like, I'm not strong enough. So, it's a, yeah, it's a dangerous phrase to use. Yeah. And and we're all striving to be happy. Mm -hmm. So, it. (laughs) (laughs) You guys, this has been amazing. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you so much. No, I appreciate it. Yeah, this is awesome. Crystal. Uh, This is probably far the best one um, yet so far. This is. And I hope whoever listens takes everything in yeah, and kind of explores themselves and, you know, be a good person. Yeah. You don't need to be a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> there I totally. There's, that is our White House representatives. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Don't be a jerk. <laughs> just That's the motto of the day. Yeah. Don't, don't <laughs> be a jerk. Listen, learn, and, and um, take care of each other. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's important that we understand where everybody's coming from, or at least try yep. to understand, um, and just be there for each other. Rather, if it's just listening and not saying anything, mm-hmm. or if it's saying a lot, and maybe it's just a simple text, hey, how you doing? Yeah. Checking in on people. Um, this has been great. I appreciate you guys both. I know it took a lot, Crystal, for... We had a lot of texts <laughs> back and forth. I don't know. I, know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard for me to share my story. Sure. So it, it's hard to be vulnerable like that. Yeah, I. You know, I get it. Just keep it private. So. Yeah, and I I hope as time goes on, you can kind of work it out, be more and more aware, because it's only going to help somebody else. It yeah. really is. It really as cliche <laughs> as it sounds, somebody out there is just dying to probably tell somebody what's going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I agree. <laughs> so keep it up. Don't give up <laughs> on it. Thank you. Yeah, I'm working on it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, always keep making yourself better. Cash, likewise. Thank you <laughs> yeah, so much, no, man. Thank you, guys. Dude, thank you. I think I might just have you sit in. Anytime. Cash? Yeah, anytime. What do you think, man? Yeah. Well, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My years of study. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you both. Um, have a great day. Thanks, um, take Ross. care hey, of Thanks, other. Ross. You guys. Oh, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Um, I always like to leave with a bit of music because I think music is super important for a lot of things, mm-hmm. for a lot of people. Uh, people can just kind of relate to it greatly. Crystal, your <laughs> song that you've been into it. 
Yeah, so Can you this say it is, for me? Yeah, so I'm going to explain it. So this is my happy song. Okay. So this is a song I go to. It says we're talking about like depression, anxiety. I'm like, oh, I'm going to share like my happy song. This is what gets me up and dancing. Cool. So it's called um, Danza Cuduro by Don Omar. By Don Omar. Mm -hmm. So Danza is spelled D-A-N-Z-A. Mm -hmm. uh, there, his last, is that his or her? That's the name of the song. Oh, that's the name of the song. Yes. The name of the song is Danza. Okay, so that is spelled D-A-N-Z-A. Q Q K U D U R O, and the artist is Don Omar. Omar, that's spelled D O N, um, space his last name, O M A R. Yes. <laughs> Check it out, folks. Enjoy, and as always, thank you for listening. This is Herb. <laughs>